Hi everybody, this is Becky and you guys are gonna watch me put on this face of makeup. I'm really happy to see you. Today is my first YouTube video ever and the reason I decided to come onto YouTube and show my skills is because honestly all my friends and my family and yet even strangers told me to do YouTube. Just try YouTube because they really like how I do my makeup and the reason I decided to say yes to this and finally take this opportunity was because I've realized that there's not too many makeup artists that show in-depth tutorials and descriptions, explanations of how to achieve a winged eyeliner on hooded eyes. This is why I thought I could come on here, hop onto YouTube and show people with the same or similar case of hooded eyes that you can do it, everybody can do it and maybe with my help you can figure out how to do your own specific eyeliner for your hooded eyes. So I thought today since I have a photo shoot later this would be the perfect opportunity to just go ahead and film my first video. So I'm basically going to show you how to catfish your makeup because I've heard a lot of people talk about how it's catfishing if you put on a lot of makeup because you actually don't look this way. I don't see it like this, but a lot of people have this opinion. I think it's a way of expressing yourself, of showing who you are, being who you want to be. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to get from this to this. And let's just get right into the video. First thing we want to do after we clean our face is tweeze your eyebrows. I'm also going to shave my tail off. I mean, I don't have a tail right now because I've been tweezing it off, but I want it to be a clean, smooth surface. So here I go, going in with the razor for the very first time in my life. I hope I don't cut myself. Oh, this is scary. I don't want to shave off my lashes. Alright, I think that should be it. It's alright, we'll see how it works with those. So now I'm going to put on some golden hydrogel eye pads from Stefanie Giesinger, who used to be Germany's Next Top Model years ago. Just so I don't have to worry about my fallout and I can just use the time of doing my eyes by also hydrating them. Oh, these are so wiggly. That's funny. These feel really good to be honest. Never used those before. Wow, this is so cool and hydrating, you can tell. They seem to do what they promise. Alright, then let's get started with the makeup. I start off with my eyebrows so I can carve them out with foundation and everything and not mess up my eyeshadow. In the process of doing that, first I apply some foundation or concealer, whatever you prefer. Right now I have the Jeffree Star foundation. I apply it before so I have a little base underneath my eyebrows. And I also don't have to worry too much to get over the eyebrows once I put on my real foundation. Then we blend. we're done blending we start carving out the eyebrows it doesn't matter if it's a little messy right now because we're going to clean them up later first I try to brush them in the direction I like the most so they're not like all over the place before I start 
for eyebrows, I use the Maybelline Tattoo Brow in the color Pomade. Since we've been shaving off the tail, it gives us the opportunity to get a nice lift and put our tail really high. To do the bottom line, I flip my brush and I just follow the natural hairs all the way to the tail and then I flip it back up again and continue with the shape I like. And I fill them out just casually, not drawing in all the single hairs like other people. It's just way too much time for my opinion, but I do draw in the front hairs a little bit. I go way lighter with my pressure over here, so we don't have the front part of the eyebrow looking as dark as the back. And then I brush it out a little bit to make it even lighter, yeah, just like that. We're gonna do the same thing with the second eyebrow now. First I do the upper line of my eyebrow, the outline. Now I flip the brush again and I do the bottom line. When I get to the tail, I follow the direction of the bottom line and try to draw a little brown banana on my face <laughs> and see if I like the shape. Now when we get to cleaning up the eyebrow, I just went off camera and washed this brush that I actually used for the eyebrows. And you guys might be wondering, Becky, what the fluff are you doing using the same brush for carving out the eyebrows as you used for the actual eyebrows? But this is the sharpest brush I know. It has a really nice angle, it's like really thin, so this is just the best brush I could use for it. In this step, you want to make sure to have a really steady hand. So for me, that means don't drink coffee beforehand or do a lot of workouts because if you shake, it's going to mess up what you just did. And we don't want that. As I did with the actual eyebrow, I'm flipping my brush upside down if I do the outline so I can use the sharp end to get as precise as possible. I put the concealer on the brush directly and use it to clean up my mess. What I'm doing now is trying to blend in the concealer that I've just used to carve out my eyebrows and just gonna brush them out a little bit with the brush so that you don't see that much of a harsh line. So now we go ahead and we slightly buff out the little concealer with the beauty blender. Since I don't have my eye primer right now, I'm gonna use concealer as well because I think that works just as fine. I'm gonna put it all over my eyelid. Here we go, buffing out my concealer as a base for my eyeshadow. I'm gonna do that over this one and the other one off camera as well while I sip my iced coffee that my nice mom just brought me. And we're back with my concealed eyelids and my iced coffee from my adorable mommy. So delicious. Once 
we slightly buffed out all the creases. We're using our eyeshadow brush and now we gotta see what colors I want to use today. The photo shoot is gonna be a very sportive type of photo shoot. I'm gonna wear a neon green, almost neon yellow crop top and I'm going to wear black pants to it. I want something that matches this outfit. And I thought the perfect palette for that would obviously be the Conspiracy palette from Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson. It has this neon yellow in there and like a little bit of this Illuminati green. And here this Conspiracy green. I think I'm gonna do something with that. I'm not quite sure yet. But first we're gonna do a little bit of the base because those neon colors are more gonna go on the actual lid. The best color to start off with is probably my pills, which I can pop like right in this corner where the eyebrow starts. All right, so I start over here. This palette I think has a lot of fallout, but that doesn't matter because I do my foundation after anyway. So I'm gonna try to blend this color into the front corner of the eyebrow to make it appear softer and make it all come together. For highlight, I really, really, really love Ranch. As you can tell, it's already been used a lot. It's just such a bright diamond white and it just looks amazing. Most important thing I do for highlight, for anything that I want to pop in my face, I always wet my brush really well in just normal water or you can use setting spray as well. Usually I use water because I just don't want to waste my setting spray too much. But for like photo shoots, I'm gonna use the setting spray as well. Because if not using it for a photo shoot, then when are you gonna use it? With the eyebrow highlight, we also need to make sure not to get it all over the eyebrow itself, which I think is the hardest part of the eyebrows actually. Because oftentimes, highlight is just really loose powder and it gets all up in my eyebrow hairs and then I have to make sure to somehow brush it back out again with a spoolie. But when you wet your brush really well and with the Jeffree Star formula, that just works really well. As you can tell, it sits as if it was watercolor or something. I buff it out a bit so it doesn't have a harsh line. Today I'm gonna drag everything really far and do it way more extreme than I usually do just because on camera you can't tell how much makeup you actually wear. Delicious. same thing with the other eyebrow as well now and then I'm gonna come right back to you. Both of the eyebrow highlights look stunning and now back into color. I'm going back into my pills, the one that I used over here as well. And I'm going to blend that into the highlight to make it seem like a natural gradient. Now we definitely have that gradient that I want and I'm thinking what I can do to make this neo look come to life. So I think for the top part of my eye, I'm actually gonna use neutral colors. I'm gonna just start as if I would do my normal daily routine and then on the lid I'm going to put that little pop of yellow in there. So right now I'm going into Tanacon, also from the Conspiracy palette, and blending that into my petals. I try to drag it out really far and go all over back into the inner corner. What I've noticed is really helpful when blending out your colors or blending out anything really is taking the brush all the way at the bottom and just lightly using it as if it's just a tiny feather. I'm going in with Diet Root Beer, also from the Conspiracy palette. That's a little bit darker than Tanacon.
I'm back with a palette that I just bought yesterday in a German grocery store. You wouldn't know it probably. It's just like a typical neutral palette, I would say. It's from Trend It Up. I don't know if you can see. I hope you can. It's called the Color Cube Eyeshadow Palette. I think this one is really pretty. This dark brown one. So I'm just gonna pick that up and see how it performs with the other eyeshadows. When it comes closer to the lid, I like to just press the color on first to make sure I have it in the shape I want it. Once I have the shape I want, I can start lightly blending it out. Because what often happened to me when I started doing such heavy makeup, I would start blending not knowing how the colors blend and perform on my face or in general. And then I would just have the darkest color all over my eye and you wouldn't be able to tell that there's other colors anymore and it would just overall look really dirty and dark. We don't want that, so I really suggest pressing them on in the shape you want before you start blending. Always make sure it still looks like a blend and not just one single color. Do you guys have that also? I always have one problematic eye. Like this one doesn't want to pick up the color at all and this one totally does. But we're not gonna let it win today. We're definitely gonna make it happen. And we're gonna make it work. Hey people, I know I got a mask on and everything. The camera decided to say goodbye because it's so hot right now and it overheated so I had to take a break and wait for it to cool down again. So I decided to put on a face mask and this was this one. It's cool, I tried it out but now my skin is getting all red and it burns like crazy so I'm gonna quickly take this off and be right back. I'm probably gonna have a really red face after this. Look at how red I am. I look like I have a really bad sunburn. This is crazy. This face mask just didn't work for me. And I've also never used it before, so I don't know how I got the idea to use it, especially now in this video. Now I'm gonna use this. I had it in my fridge to cool off my skin a little bit and to make it calm down because it feels so stressed right now. Let's just ignore the fact that my skin is so red for the rest of this video. Okay, all right, we can continue. For the actual lid, I always carve it out with concealer as well, because you need a light base. I like the front to be upright and I'm gonna put more ranch on it later for the inner corner highlight. Use the packing brush. Put ranch all over the inner corner. I love a good inner corner highlight. I'm gonna use a little bit of my All Nighter Urban Decay setting spray. Spray it on the brush. Go back into food videos. And now I'm packing that onto the middle of the lid. It's funny because it actually matches my headband, I just realized. I think we're gonna go into Illuminati, which was this darker green. We're gonna use that in the outer corner of my lid. Oh my goodness, this is pigmented. This is a lot. 
I didn't expect that. That looks better on the eye than it does in the pen. I think we could still use a pop of Conspiracy in between the yellow and the green, the dark green. That's what was missing, definitely. This looks better on the eye than in the palette as well. I'm impressed. I mean, I already thought I knew this palette, but I ha actually haven't used the greens yet. I've used food videos, the yellow, before, but I have not used the green colors. And wow, this is insane. Now we're going to use a little bit of black to darken things up. For the bottom lash line, I'm using this thin packer brush. And I'm actually gonna use the same colors I used on top this time. First, the bright yellow. Blending it out with the lighter green conspiracy. To eyeliner. This is my absolute favorite eyeliner. Literally for at least five years I have preferred to use this one. I have used other ones because I was in a different country for a while and they didn't have that one or at least I couldn't find it over there. So I've tried other ones but I wasn't happy with them. I had my mom actually sent this one to me in the mail because I couldn't live without it. The Cicatrice Cosmetics Liquid Liner Waterproof. I'm curling my eyelashes. First going over here. And then I have to open my eyes fully, look straight into the mirror like this. And then I first trace the shape I want it to be in. Now I raise my eyebrow, make the surface straight, try to darken this entire area in between, but I don't go further this way, but because then you can tell I would like draw my entire upper eye. So I go down here, basically make like a triangle. I know it's really complicated, but if you have folded eyes like me and you want any kind of winged eyeliner you're gonna have to do this or at least something similar now i'm just gonna follow my lash line do the normal thing i'm trying to make it bigger in the back in the outer corner of my eye back here so in the end it can look as if it connects with the wing but it actually won't because of the hooded eye now it looks as if it connects, right? And then I'm going to look down and you'll see what happens. It is a huge triangle here. You can't just connect it to down here because then you're gonna mess up your entire eyeliner. All right, I'm sorry y'all. My camera just died on me. I have to continue filming with my phone. I just did the exact same thing I did on this eye, on the other eye, and put some mascara on. When I close my eyes and pull up my eyebrow, my eyeliner looks really crooked, but I want it to look like a real cat eye when I open my eyes, right? That's more important than when I close them. You just need to make sure that you don't like lift your eyebrows all the time. Not like me, when I talk. Don't do these expressions because then everybody's gonna see your crooked eyelid. Now I just run over my face a little bit with this reusable makeup wipe and I'm trying to get rid of these little eyeshadow marks because I like my eye look to end with my eyeliner. So I'm just carefully scrubbing them away with a little bit of a wet towel. Obviously my skin has not been or anything so I'm using 
the Pore Fashional Matte Rescue Primer. I'm using it on a beauty blender because when I just smear it all over my face, stripes appear and I don't want that to happen. Now, what is really important is to always let your primer dry before you put anything else on it. If you don't let your primer dry, then there's going to be marks all over the place, your foundation is going to get sheer, it's going to be rubbed away in some part. You definitely do not want that. Always take the time to let your primer dry. Now that the primer has dried, I'm moving on to foundation. I start off the brush. I just like to spread it all over the face with the brush and then I go in with the beauty blender. I'm not quite sure which foundation I'm gonna need today since I'm so much more tan than usual. I'm just gonna start off and see. Let's see, does that match? It might be a little bit light. I'm using one darker shade and mix it up within just a little bit so it doesn't look too unrealistic the one i just used the darker one i ordered it off the internet um that was a jeffree star one and that is usually way too dark for me and the one i casually use is the superstay full coverage from maybelline new york i've been using this for years and I've moved on to different foundations and realized I didn't like them as much and came back to this one because it just worked great for me. So now with foundation, the one thing I have noticed is that you really need to just tap it on really lightly. It takes a long ass time, but you need to do it in order to make it look flawless. I actually think the mixture of the two foundations I just did match my skin tone really well currently because of my tan. I bought a new contouring pro palette. It's from Essence. I'm going to use some Jeffree Star translucent powder. See if this contouring palette is actually worth using. This is not blending at all. I don't like that. I don't want it to not blend. Oh my gosh, this doesn't look good. Oh goodness. Don't think I'm gonna do more. This is not it, sis. No, no, no. Getting rid of the powder. Seeing what damage I have done. Well, nobody can tell, right? pretend it's never happened. This color is good though, but somehow it's not really budging, it's not blending. And that's not a good thing for a contour. I mean, you kind of want this to blend. I mean, here, this is like so dark. Oh my goodness. I'm just gonna go over it with the beauty blender a bit. Now, I'm gonna put a little bit right here to make it seem like I have a thinner face because if you couldn't tell, I have like really chubby fat right here. What I do when I contour my nose, I just use my finger, put it in the contouring to make sure I don't get my nail into the contouring. So I can just go like this, lightly going down, trying to not rub off my foundation underneath. I'm putting a lot right here too. I like to look tan because that kind of makes it look a little bit more tilted upwards and I like that feature on people. I'm trying to copy it. <laughs> now, moving on to blush. This is a blush palette. I'm actually really happy with this. I bought this in a grocery store too recently. It's from BH Cosmetics. It's called Vanilla Cream Truffle and it smells like vanilla when you open it. 
it's really awesome. I like peachy colors on my face, and so I'm gonna go in with this. Going in circular motions, kind of dabbing it on as well. Yeah, that looks good. Doesn't look too much, I love this one color. And then I put it like around the tip of my nose as well. I like it on top here to make it look like I was in the sun a little bit. And down here on the tip. Now I'm just trying to basically flat iron my under eyes. I definitely have to set my forehead today because it's shiny, because it's so hot and eyebrows and stuff, you know, you can put it all over your eyebrows just to make them last longer. <coughs> I mean, don't breathe it in, that's really not healthy. So I'm just gonna slap it all over my face because today is so warm. You just want to look matte. Brush it away, especially under the eyes. And then on the forehead, just brush, 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 brush. There we go. And now we're obviously putting Ranch as highlighter back into this beautiful palette. And I'm using my setting spray again to wet the highlighter brush and dabbing it all into Ranch. And now, watch how blinding that's gonna be. So pretty. It really is something I would need as a highlighter. I mean, Jerry, could you please just make this into a big highlighter? So now, if my fingers are clean, which they are now, I use them to make it blend more. Now, we're using this little brush, wetting it, and I love to put a lot of highlighter right the middle of the tip of my nose right there and i drag a line down the middle of my nose as well up here it can be wider in between the eyebrows like a big highlight for my lips highlight them here okay now i'm doing my bottom lashes So when I need a lot of product on some lashes, because sometimes the lashes just don't pick up the mascara, I use it like this and I just use the tip and put it on there. For me, one of the most important things, lashes. If I find them, what have I done? Have I lost my lashes? Well, I'm using new ones then. I don't know how they're gonna look in my eyes yet and I can't open them. I don't know how the fluff to open this. One second. Oh, ow. I almost broke my nail doing this. That hurt. Ow. Just gonna put them on real quick off camera. So now that the lashes are on, we're just gonna finish up with lids. So I have this color, also from Jeffree Star, that's Posh Spice. I'm gonna use that as a lip liner. And... I'm using the same brush I've been using for my eyebrows and carving out the eyebrows to do it. Now that the lip liner is done, I'm using my favorite liquid lipstick color also from Jeffree Star which is Celebrity Skin. I love this one, you can tell it's about to be empty. Since we have already so much color going on on the eyes, we only need a neutral lip and we're good to go. Alright, now we're just gonna go over all of it with the Beauty Blender one more time to flatten out our wrinkles. We need a lot today. 
I'm using this sponge again to press in the setting spray all over the face and make it stay there all night. And voila, we're done. This is the full illusion. This is my top, crop top, and I have these baggy pants and white sneakers. And this is how we're gonna go to the photo shoot. Well, we're actually already at the scene. And back there, they're already taking pictures. I made it. It was really stressful. I couldn't film the outro at home. So I'm doing it here right now. It was an experience with my phone and my camera dying. But I think I'll continue doing YouTube. We'll see how this video turns out. I hope the camera focused on me because I've realized that in a few videos, I think it didn't, but we'll see how it all comes together. And if I upload it, you guys will see if it comes up. If it doesn't, it'll always be a mystery. <laughs> well, so this is Becky and I will be happy to see you in my next video. Goodbye.